but unfortunately I broke the sherp. I'm not exactly sure what happened right now, but as I pull back on one of the levers, it's really not engaging anymore. Hello everybody, Dan here from Sherp ET. Unfortunately, I got some sad news. The Sherp is essentially down for the count right now. I broke the brake caliper um, frame, I'll say it that. Uh, so the Sherp does not turn to the right right now. The clutch and everything works fine. Um, but uh, I have no brakes on one side, so it means I couldn't turn to the right. I was able to contact Sherp USA. They answered my phone call, like always, uh, basically immediately. Um, got a new one on order. Should be coming here soon. Next Saturday, I'm planning to go to McMiller uh, Sports Complex. It's a shooting range that's down in Eagle, Wisconsin. Uh, planning to just show the Sherp off there a little bit. Um, talk to some people about some of the capabilities of the Sherp and kind of go from there. Uh, so I got to get this thing up and running. This is a quick little trick is take oil dry pads and put them in the bottom of the Sherp so they don't have to work in oil. I also keep these inside of the Sherp in the event something would break on the outside, but they are a lifesaver. So I took the master link off before and it was actually facing this way before, but what I need to do is move it to this side because I'll back up the Sherp a little bit, get it here right underneath this support, and then I'll take it off and then I'll be able to pull the chain off this way. We take out, take out this bolt, and then we take out that bolt. So this bolt here for the emergency brake, you can tell that right there from that cable, um, this also backed out, which is kind of surprising. And I should have known better on the other side on this brake right here. Whoops, pop this one right here up on top. That one also popped out. So I'm getting those put back in there too. Um, suggest using uh, blue Loctite on those. Well, I got the bolt all put back in, both of them. We got the caliper taken off on the passenger side. We just got to wait for that to come. We're going to put new brake pads on that too when it comes. And we're pretty much rearing to go. Although I did find one additional wire off um, on the battery. Um, so I think I'm going to go putz with that also. Well, I got my parts. It's almost sundown. I'm going to try to get this sucker back together yet tonight um, so I can be ready for Saturday. Hopefully it's going to go smooth. You got to make sure that that sprocket is in the perfect place or uh, it will not work right in between those teeth. It's kind of neat. Very tight. So I screwed up at this particular point. I forgot to put the brake line on the caliper before I put it in, so eventually I had to take the whole damn thing apart again. Don't be a dumbass like me. Always put on the brake bows first. I sped this up so you wouldn't be bored here. It's at four times the normal speed. Don't forget to put on that Loctite before you put those bolts back in. That's why I probably had those other two bolts back out. I don't remember if I took them off or what happened, but uh, make sure she stays back together again. Special thank you to Sherp USA for answering my telephone call so quickly getting me those parts on a timely basis so I could get this bugger back together again. Here's a picture with that hose properly installed that I should have done at the very beginning.
I'm not exactly sure what the torque specs should be, but I gave her a pretty good tightening. After I got that brake caliper installed, we just gave one final snug to that brake line. When we get those brake pads put in place, put that top bracket over the top of those brakes, and we are pretty much raring to go in terms of installation. Sped this section up again four times the normal speed just so you're not going to be bored. When we do put that top bracket on, we do use Loctite on those bolts again. So I'm kind of futzing with that as we're going through this whole thing. Eventually we did get this entire thing installed. And then the next process that we have to go through is we have to basically bleed the brakes. And I'll show you a description about how I do that when I'm by myself. It is much easier to do when you have two people. Um, the other part that is difficult to do is, is to get that chain put back onto that sprocket. Once you have that brake caliper installed, life becomes more difficult. In other words, the same issue that we had in taking those bolts out and making sure they're aligned correctly with the sprocket holds true when you put it back together again, but you cannot put the chain in place without moving the wheels because of the multiple things that are in the way. So long story short, what I did is I took my four-wheeler, hooked it up to the Sherp, and I pulled it up a couple of inches to get that chain to go around that sprocket so I could reinstall that master link. Well, you can kind of see that. So if I pull on this rope here as I'm sitting in the back of the Sherp, I can get the brakes to be bled. So what I got going here is I gotta get these two chains back together again, but I can't get in there because there's no darn room with the brake caliper in there. So I gotta try to drive it backwards a little bit to get this chain link right here down to about here. Hopefully you can see that down to about there. Well, brakes got bled, panels were put back on, and the Sherp is a rolling again. My next video is going to be focused on McMiller Sports Center. I was invited there for a big open house. Looking forward to giving some people rides and seeing their reactions to the Sherp. Take care, everyone.